The suburbs. Can you believe how many sellouts live in the suburbs? <laughs> I'm punk rock, man. I, like the movie Suburbia. I think the suburbs is a joke. <laughs> When I was 18, I moved to Montreal because there was a bar there called Fufun Electric. It was alternative. And I thought, I'm never moving back to the suburbs. It's so boring when you're 14 and 15, you want to party, there's nothing to do. So I moved to the city. And then a quarter of a century later, I looked around and went, what the hell am I doing here? I got three kids. They're not playing. When I was a kid in the 70s, the suburbs was awesome. Maybe it's boring when you're a teenager. Everything's boring when you're a teenager, unless you're at an orgy that's at a rock show with free drugs and booze, and the windows are blackened out with aluminum foil so you can go for 60 hours. Everything else is boring. That's life when you're a teen. We used to hop on our bikes, go to Darren Alberti's house, go to Michael Cox's house. It was so fun, and I thought, what the hell am I doing here? And there's a lot of reasons, by the way, to move from the city. Not just the rats, not just the graffiti, Everywhere, someone is writing their fucking nickname on someone else's property. It's your nickname, you loser. There's guys in New York getting killed because they want to go down into the in between where the trains are and write my nickname and then die. Nice street culture. God, I was walking down the street the other day. There's this lesbian, fat, she looks like Ralphie Mae, fat white lesbian with her black lover. They're both looking in a Sephora window at makeup they'll never buy, and they're pushing a straw with a kid in it. And it's got a boombox blaring rap. And I just look back with just disgust. I mean, I've been in the city for 25 years, in New York for 15. And I just look back with disgust and he goes, Yo, you got a problem looking at my beautiful baby girl? And I go, Yeah, I do. It's late and it's really loud. And she goes, Fuck you! This is, and he puts her arms up. She goes, This is New York City. That's a thing New Yorkers always say. They'll steal your cab. What are you doing? Steal my cab. They'll go, This is New York City. It means I get to be an asshole? I don't know what the hell they're doing. And I thought, you're right, this is New York City. What am I doing here? So I sold my place, went into the burbs, and I realized how different the suburbs was. I realized I've waited way too long to do this. Even my kids are sort of going, wait a minute, everyone's nice here and there's other kids to play with. What? Well, uh, uh, hello? We're war vets. Sorry, I don't want to disparage veterans. But it does feel a little like a mini tiny sort of version of PTSD. Like when we moved in, uh, my neighbor, she gives me apple crumble with a bottle of wine and a handwritten note card with a ribbon on it. And I'm like, what are you doing? I don't want, I'm not giving you any money for this. And don't give me some bullshit about how you got a bus ticket to Chicago. And she goes, no, it's yours. Take it. Take it. Then I went into the kitchen and ate it like this. Hoping there's no K2 in it or bath salts. <laughs> That's number one. Okay, let me give you 10 things that is unique about the suburbs and 10 reasons why you should move there if you have kids. Number one is serenity. It is the Eddie Murphy sketch when he was white for a day. Remember when he gave, he's trying to buy a newspaper and he gives the guy money and the guy goes, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm buying this newspaper. That's all right. There's nobody around. Go ahead, take it. Take it. Go ahead, take it. Yeah, take it. Incidentally, brackets. I was telling the story to Jim Downey. He's the SNL writer who uh, he, he was big for 20 years over there in the 80s. He did uh, Change Bank and Lawyer Caveman. And uh, he was, he lives way up in upstate and he goes, so what do you think of the burbs? And I go, it's like that Eddie Murphy sketch where the guy's giving the paper and Jim Downey goes, you know, that's me, right? <laughs> Mind blown. Anyway, that's a tangent and kind of a name drop, I guess. So number one is the suburbs is that Eddie Murphy sketch. Number two, nobody's gay. I, I, when Jim Gold was editing Tacky Mag, he kept saying to me, why are all your stories about gays? And I'm like, what do you mean? Everyone's gay. That's why my stories are about, are about gays. Gay, 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 gay. And then I moved to the burbs and I realized nobody's gay. If you're living in the city, you're going out every night, it's probably because you don't have kids. You're either a spinster or a fag. 
all my friends are fags, like 50%. So it was totally normal for me to talk about, you know, gay marriage and gay this and gay that because it was part of my life. Then I moved to the suburbs. No one really talks about it. It's never really occurred to anyone. Gays are 1% of the population. But in the city, it's more like 20 and 30, and you end up thinking that's the norm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> but it is weird not being around any gays at all. No graffiti, no gays, mowed lawns, friendly people, serenity now. Number three, they uh, like your kids. You see, in the city, these spinsters see your kids and they look at them with disdain. Men look at your kids and go, ooh, those things are bad news. They mean I'm going to stop getting laid and I got to start getting serious and put a ring on it. I don't like those things. They symbolize me not parting. Women know that they should be getting those, but they don't. And the kids are like a hole in the plot to spinsters. They, they go, oh, I'm having desires, but ah! It's like showing a junkie heroin. So they focus their attention on your dog. And when I walk my stupid Havanese puppy that I'd happily sell to a Chinese restaurant, they go, oh, how many months is he? Is that a boy or a girl? What an angel. And I go, I guess it's technically a boy, but who cares? It's a dog. And then they, see, they look at my kids and go, oh, except the Puerto Ricans. I don't know why, but the Puerto Ricans go, God bless you, God bless you. In the suburbs, it's the inverse. They look at your dog and they go, your dog's running out on the street. And you go, I don't care if he dies. And they go, okay. Oh, my God, are these your kids? How old are they? Oh, my daughter's eight. They have fulfilled their biological imperative. And I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm not saying you need to be a housewife. But for the vast majority, it seems to work out great. And when they pursue this natural instinct, when they go with the grain, I'm going to say 95% of them are happy. Happiness pervades the suburbs. And a great way to gauge happiness is how much they like kids. Number four, nobody has tattoos. What was I doing covering my entire back with a skull-faced jellyfish eating Chiang Kai-shek and Fidel Castro with Destruction Creates written in Chinese and English on my entire body? Uh, that's not a lot of tattoos here. I mean, in, in New York, it's not uncommon to have your neck and all your hands and maybe just a little thing here, a little cross on your forehead. I'm the illustrated man when I go to the beach, and my wife has actually been sort of discouraging me from going to the beach, which I agree with. I might get one of those annoying turtleneck swim shirts that the, these sonophobes wear just because I'm embarrassed of the fact that I've covered myself with drawings. Number five, and this sort of goes back to the first one, but people riff. Hey, you're getting keys made? I go to the hardware store. The guy goes, you want these to be exactly the same? Yeah. And he goes, oh, otherwise they won't work, right? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. We're in a monoculture. Not segregation, but voluntary congregation. And I'm never, I never, ever want the government to sanctify either of those things. But when they happen, naturally, people seem cheerier. I don't know. Maybe one of the reasons you look at a Tokyo water park and they're all shoulder to shoulder is because they don't mind. They're with their own. Now, that's not to say that it's all one race. It's actually relatively multicultural, despite what Obama keeps pushing on us. But everyone seems to have the same goal there, and that is to be self-sufficient and pay for their family. And it makes for a very conducive, what's the word? A very uh, serene community. Also, by the way, in this area where everyone's friends, teenagers are no longer the enemy. I, in, in New York, teenagers, you got to watch your back. They don't understand ramifications. They might play the knockout game. They might just smash a bottle on your face because they're in a bad mood because their girlfriend dumped them. They think four minutes ahead, not the 17 years they're going to be at Rikers. Not in the burbs. I'm passing these kids in the middle of the night. They don't have lights on their bicycles, so it's just pitch black. And I'm walking down there. I have no shirt on because I was moving a bunch of boxes. Pitch blackness, right? And we're coming at each other, just these two shadows in the night. You know what one of the teenagers said on his bike? Hi, how you doing? Uh, hello. Hi. I'm like the Coneheads. <laughs> I'm an alien visiting my own people. I feel totally uncomfortable everywhere I go. Hello? Hi, how are you today? Do you like music? Can I buy you a rock and roll record? I will say, though, number six, one negative thing, slightly negative, is the kids seem to lack grit. 
I've noticed that uh, kids don't like confrontation. They tend to cry more. I'm sorry. I don't want to sound like an ingrate. I don't want to sound like one of these disgruntled tourists, these Syrian refugees that come to a new place and complain about the tents, even though it looks like they're glamping. But yeah, my, when my kid plays baseball on Saturday, sometimes kids don't show up because they want to sleep in. And the games are at 9 a.m. You're seven. Seven-year-olds sleep in? I know 16-year-olds sleep in, but seven-year-olds? I think my kids are going to eat these other kids alive. I mean, my kids are from the city. They're mean. I remember seeing my daughter once at this. We were upstate, and there was some nice little boy, country kid, and he goes, I like superheroes. And my daughter goes, which ones? And he goes, I don't know. I like all superheroes. And she goes, you like Catwoman, huh? Hey, this guy likes Catwoman. And I just thought, "Uh uh-oh, I'm training mean people. I'm educating my kids in the ways of the city, which is mean. Which brings us to number seven. The schools are all good. You don't have to look up a school. You don't have to check out the teachers. You don't have to do any research. They're all great. Just send your kids off. Now, in the city, you have two choices, public school or private. Public school is a place they learn to fight. It's a place where there's a huge mural saying, you can do it too, with Jennifer Lopez and Pitbull and all these other Puerto Rican entertainers because uh, that's the best you could ever do is entertain rich people. And then there's books in the library like a Kanye West book where chapter two was the dropout. And I could tell it was for little kids because the type was this big. My wife had that book removed. Uh, they were getting, my, my daughter got a note on her a homework that said, no Merkers, M-E-R-K, because she used a marker in her homework. Now, surely you're familiar with the etymology of marker. It probably comes from the word to mark something up. What the fuck is a merk? Isn't that what you used to hide your genitalia when you have sores in the 1700s? And then she, she gets a post-it note, you're awesome, Y-O-U-R. I call it the $40,000 post-it note because I had to send them each to $20,000 a year private schools, which seems like a lot of money for someone to color. My kids are very young. Not in the suburbs. Send them off on their safe and merry way to walk to their totally awesome school where the teachers care, there are no fights, and everyone can spell. Now we're at number eight. This is also seemingly negative, uh, but I like to ride my bicycle a lot. It's a good way to get in shape without getting bored, and it's a fast way to beat the traffic. But I just wear my clothes without a helmet because I don't have Down syndrome. I'm not going to bonk my noggin. Uh, But all the people who ride bicycles in the suburbs, they have 100% of the gear you need. They have the toe clips with the shoes with the clips. They lean down. They have this crazy handlebars that have seven different options. You know those with the elbow things? How long are you going for? If I was needing all that, I would be going for a 40-mile ride, maybe the entire day, and I'd be on meth. They also have the helmet, the gloves. They have these shirts on that uh, mimic someone who's sponsored, which seems so embarrassing to me. It's like those T-shirts that are a tuxedo. You're not sponsored, dude. Why do you have brands all over your shirt that aren't paying you. Why are you free advertising brands? Anyway, they overdo it with the bicycling. Minor detail. Number nine, the silence is deafening. If I'm on a conference call in New York, I have to say my piece. Uh, yeah, well, in- 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 interns can do it at the beginning, but eventually it's going to get so complicated that we'll have to uh, take it over ourselves. Hit mute. So they don't hear the sirens and the, hey, fuck you, Nick. <laughs> What are you doing? Ah, it's so loud that sometimes you have to put your fingers in your ears. There's a siren every 10 minutes. I don't know who's dying and what fires they're chasing, but it's deafening. Then you go to the suburbs and you wake up and you're going, what the hell is that? I thought my dog was whining. It was a bird that has a nee, nee kind of a call. I was confused because the only sound I could hear was a dog whiny bird. I think it's called a cat bird, by the way. I asked the locals about it. And that, by the way, really contributes to the unbelievable peacefulness of the suburbs. And that brings me to number 10. There's no classism. Now, if you're in Britain and you move to Cheddington, where I was born, you'd notice a certain inflection. And if you showed up and you're like, hello, what are you doing? They would go, oh, Lord, look what the cat dragged in. Look what the cat birds dragged in. You don't get that in New York suburbs. When my kids pick up game, which is free, 
Again, Eddie Murphy sketch. Some salty dog just volunteers to help out. Kids just show up, pick up the bases, put them away. He's there helping kids, making them do push-ups for free. By the way, if you want to spend money, you can send them to a baseball camp for 12 grand for the summer. Whatever you want, no problems. Now, there's a lot of Mexicans and uh, probably illegals in these areas doing all the landscaping and repairing. Their kids go to the games too. You know how much tension there is? Absolutely zero. Everyone talks to everyone. It really is bizarre. And I've realized, living in the burbs for only a couple weeks now, how brutally damaged I was from living in the city. Guys, if you want to party, you're young, you're rich, or you don't care about money, you want to get wasted, get urban. Do it up. As soon as you become an adult, though, and have kids, please don't make the same mistakes I made. Get the hell out of the city and get to the burbs. It's so beautiful and perfect. It's like a comedy sketch. Did you like that? Okay, check it out. I got a whole comedy show called How's It Going, Eh? You just have to click right here to subscribe.